Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed, October 25th, 2016. We're going to move the Trumpkin up. Yeah, oh yes. The Trumpkin. We have a guest. Well, we want to auction this bad boy off. John Hopwood is here. He's holding the Trumpkin, as and you can see, painted by your sister. My Where sister. Bad With this bad boy. Yeah. Yes. Because we want to uh, auction him off, if we get permission, over the next few days to yes. raise money for... Yes, for the Payson Cancer Center in... Uh, Concord in, uh, at uh, Concord Hospital in Concord, New Hampshire. So a great cause. We did a big event. Uh, thank you, everyone, to came, who came out yesterday. I'm sorry, uh, Sunday, rather, uh, to the big event uh, at uh, Murphy's Diner right here in Manchester you that uh, Jen Coffee put together. And uh, John, John is calling someone who might be calling in. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, if you get a chance, just come in on uh, Plus you know, Eve's drop. we sent you a thing. Okay, bye. Um, <laughs> Text me. Was that Vika? Yes, our Russian correspondent. Yes, yes. So, uh, so we from we, Pebble Beach. We did uh, we did the event at Murphy's on Sunday. Thank you to everyone who came out, and that was to raise money. If this had been the, at uh, Murphy's, you'd probably got ten thousand dollars. Or today with Joe Kelly Lavasser. Yes. Did yes. Uh, Trump's son come, uh, Glenn? Oh, but we're okay. giving away I, this. I didn't uh, see him. We're not giving it away. Auctioning it off. Auctioning off, rather, this fine. Uh, you can do anything you want. With who it. painted it? We're, we're, at, we're, at five, we're at five dollars, right? We're at five dollars. We are. Five dollars. Well, he gets also the chance to come in and carve it on. Uh, well, I wish suggestion was smashing it. Yes. But that might be a little right in the face. Yeah, I, I really wish, thought. Uh, I really thought that you were going to have one made also of Hillary as well. No, my sister only does horror things like oh, uh, vampires and stuff. Very appropriate. Glenn R. J. Willett is here as well. The well, people, sir. The people's, people's mayor. mayor. Yes, yes. Glenn, will you be uh, Trump for Halloween? No, I will not be Trump for Halloween. <laughs> All right, I'm just asking. I won't be over either. <laughs> really? Um, you Gary Johnson? No. Story? How do people... What about Rocky? No. I, 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 if I knew you were going to be on it, I brought the Rocky shirt. But no. my car's not parked. Or, uh, John, how do people bid on this? Should they contact you? Or how does that work? we got to figure it. They can call in. We need an auctioneer who can talk you really fast. You have a fast. Face, Facebook page. Five dollars, five dollars, right here, ten dollars, ten dollars. I you had to wait till you got permission, you said. Well, we'll get permission, but let's yes. get it ro well, Nobody calls in to us because people are watching the news right now about what latest meltdown is going on. Matt Co well, Connerton, your Facebook That's me. page. Which should they use, IPM Nation or you? Use the uh, Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook Matt page. Matt Connerton. Like the page Mesmer while you're there. The Mesmerizer Well, page? that's my personal page, but we also have the Matt Connerton Unleashed fan page. Well, hope they go to the Matt Connerton Mesmerizer They can page. go to that one, too. Or IPM Nation. Yes, we have many Facebook pages. Yeah. We and are, uh, Norm, I'm sending you a psychic message now. No. Ooh. Oh, Joel. Joel actually was calling bingo at the cash and center. And it's the can candy thing. I was with these. Well, I had a great time. I was there, too. I was taking photographs. But there was a woman that was hard of hearing. And the new machine, we couldn't get it going. And the salon was writing her stuff down. And the woman said, I need BA. Well, I will send a message to Joel telepathically. That <laughs> and just like that, BA comes up. Really? That's really I never horrible. It was so strange, you know? Yeah, yeah. That was the weirdest thing ever. What a coincidence. Huh? Well, I figured, you know, Joel was, uh, let's not make any jo jokes at Joel's expense. No, because Joel is, is running for office. Right, and it, it is only an act. Right. 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 Joel's at, yeah, Joel does have, the, you go to his apartment, there's all the degrees, the certificates. Yes. Everything. Yes, he used to be an, an educator. Yeah. Yeah, it was before the car accident. Yes. He did, he yes. had a very bad car accident. Yes. But, yes. Uh, nobody, I think, is more... Beloved in the Manchester, except maybe for Glenn R. J. Ola. Oh, he is well. the people's mayor, after all. I wouldn't know about that, but. How do you get that? Did, did you have to run to be the people's mayor? No, I, I didn't. Somebody started that, and it's been really? like that for years. Yeah. Well, then they call you that back in. Was it Van Buren? Mm, Van no, Buren they used to call me Gov. They used to call you Gov? When I was in high school. When you were in high school? Yeah, I had gone to the governor's uh, mansion in Augusta, and uh, I negotiated something and won. Got, I got it done. Wait a minute, what did you what did you negotiate? I forget what it was. It was something that Van Buren wanted and they weren't giving it to us and I said, I'll go. And I went with someone and So you began your political career in high school? Oh yeah. Where are you from originally? I used to be uh, the uh, vice chairman of the Democratic of the young Democratic Party. Oh. But where? Where were you born? Where were you raised? He was born on a bridge. I, I was raised in Van Buren. <laughs> Van Buren, Maine. Yeah, you cross the border, you're in New Brunswick. But isn't it right, true you were yeah. born on that bridge and that's why you have dual citizenship? You were born on a bridge between uh, but there's Canada a and the line US? right there, but they didn't know where you were actually born? Oh yeah. One part belongs to Canada, the other part belongs to Maine. <laughs> 
He was right on the line. Now, C- Campobello's in the Brunswick, right? Yeah, but that's not near Van Buren. Okay. I'm trying to, because uh, New Brunswick. They're one St. Of my, Leonard's what crosses the St. John River into in New Brunswick. My father's business partner in the 60s was from Boston. And Boston, just like Joel. But he got a speeding ticket in New Brunswick in his brand new uh, Cadillac. And when they informed him he was in a foreign country, he had no idea. He just thought New Brunswick know, was another state. He didn't you know, know he crossed the border, New Brunswick, really? New Hampshire. But, no. Well, because, but the did borders. He, didn't were, he go through the borders? Yeah, what were the borders like in 1965? Well, they still, you still had to go through them. Maybe you didn't have to stop. You had well, to stop. I, can, I can see, though, maybe on a back road. That, that no, he, you don't speed on those back roads. No. But uh, no. he probably never even thought about it. He was a tough street kid from, uh, maybe from he was, Boston. I mean, no, it was that past midnight at 1 o'clock. Maybe he got through. Speeding so maybe, fast, yeah. he went past the Border Patrol. Well, it was a good story before Glenn, Glenn uh, yeah, Glenn. made me think about it. Thanks for ruining John's story, Glenn. Glenn, Sorry. you often uh, throw the monkey wrench into things. Like, uh, uh, Glenn will actually <laughs> actually read I like the honesty. hundreds of pages that go before every alderman yeah. meeting, and you'll actually ferret out certain things. Hey, Glenn, I have a question. Where did they get the money for redoing City Hall, because I don't rem- I don't oh. read it as thoroughly as you do. They bonded it. You're kidding. But they bonded remember, everything. Joyce but stopped them from doing yes, that. But remember, Spray. remember, they how much money? For it cost it them more than what they want. It was, it was it was a little over. It was about a quarter, three quarters of a million dollars. Now they're about one point four million, and the chambers never got done. That was part of it, but because they went overboard, that money went there. So next year they're going to budget more money to do the chamber a second time. I mean, a second budget for the for work that has not been done that should have been done. And do you think if Ga- well, Gatsis, uh they re- will still be mayor? So, well, for the next what do you budget, think? Yes. What do you think Gats is going to do to the big portrait of Bill Cashin if they redo the chambers? I would think it would stay there. Are you, you it sure? It has to be about removed. That? It can't be removed by the mayor. It has to be removed by the board of mayor and aldermen. Oh, what okay. does he have against Bill Cashin? Well, I don't know, but uh, I, I uh, Bill Cashin friends. was the. Honorary chairman of the Joyce Craig campaign. Oh, oh I along with Mary that. Heath. That's what he was. He with was. Mary Heath. Yeah. You think Gatsis will run for mayor again? I don't know. Uh, I've got a perfect campaign here, slogan what? for he, him. He he gives indications some day that he might, and other days he gives indications that he might not. So I, I don't know. How's this for a campaign slogan? Hey, at least it's not math. What do you think? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> you think that works? You're funny. Should I work in politics based on that? Am I not just can try. a guru of, of great slogans for campaigns? One of the bu- best things he ever did was he decided not to run for state rep. Yes, that the probably was. How, the, <laughs> how come you never? Were you ever state rep? No, I Didn't ran. You run? I, tried, you ever I run? tried to run once. You remember, I don't it's have. Hard, a, it's hard for an independent. There are two reasons I'm independent. Three reasons I don't have a vehicle. I don't like, don't like depending on people. And three is is uh, you have to get all those damn signatures. In the middle of but summer why when would nobody's you, home. Why is it so important for you to run as an independent where free staters will run for whatever party is dominant? Let me tell you something. I am so independent that if I joined either the Democratic or Republican Party, they wouldn't support me because they know that I'm independent. Oh, we have a, uh, I, okay. I, we have a call. This I might do be, what's best for the people. This might be someone uh, wanting for to the bid Trumpkin. on the uh, Trumpkin. Which you named. Hello, do I hear $10, $10, $10, do I hear $10? That's how they do it, right? They do it right <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Hello, welcome to the show. Hello, am I on? Yes, you are. Who is this? Yeah, I just could not have tuned in at a better time with better people on a line to pose this question. Okay, I've been a Democrat most of my life, but always were accused of tax and spend, tax and spend, and you can't vote for a Democrat because all they do is tax and spend. Mm-hmm. What about the other flip side of that same coin, okay, where the Republicans, whether it's national, whatever, you know, increasing the, the national debt, or whether it's local, I call them, they live on a credit card. Yes. Everything, and I want to need to know, why is it that New Manchester cannot subside itself on taxes, and why does everything in half the world have to be bonded? Thank you. I All totally right, agree. I'm going to uh, totally phrase agree. this to you, uh, Glenn. It's well known that before the tax cap override of 2014, which is the one before the election that came up, which 
came down to Joyce and the mayor. The mayor took each individual alderman into his office and said he would support a tax cap override as long as it was under 4%. His stealth budget was managed by uh, Billy Shea, and they did get it under 4%. But he took each one in there. Everybody knows that. Well, and then he runs on the tax cap. That, <laughs> like Joe Labasse, he's never was an enthusiast. He never supported the tax Isn't it really easy to well, override it, though? I mean, what's, no, what's even need, the point of having it? No, you need 10 votes. 10 votes. Two things. Yeah. The law, the charter allows for an override in yes. emergency cases. Well, some of their cases aren't very much emergency. Well, that term it's tends to be spent. subjective and in government. Two is, right? yeah. you, can say, you can say what you want about the mayor, about mayor Gatsis. He's not a true conservative. He's a spender. Oh, yeah. And he loves to use the credit card. Yeah. Uh, we have... Bonding. Is it, you're very right, sir. How much of the roads in, in the history of Manchester, roads, the tar and we the used to pay the roads, for that ourselves. were never... We're never bonded. Bonded. Never. And that's the classic Harry Bird of uh, the Senate. There was always Democrats that no pay as you go. You pay as you go. That's right. That was it. We you don't you rack up debt. That's right. Jimmy but Carter, they had a trillion dollars of debt under the, tr and then mm -hmm. Reagan tripled mm -hmm. it, and then you have McCain saying, "Oh, the." But, but you know what, what the problem the is, is, is? Clinton was the last fiscally conservative president we had. The true one, I guess. Right. Yeah. The, the, the problem really is, is that um, but you always had pay as you go, and the classic yeah, thing is you pay for your streets, and now under. This guy who was running against Joyce, I'm the strong person of the tax cap, who sent out all this tax cap, tax cap, tax cap stuff. He was bonding. Was it six million dollars or even more for our streets or bonds? At eighteen, at one point, eighteen should, million dollars. Let me tell you bonding. something. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Uh, Mayor Gatsis loves bonding. Well, we should clarify what that means. What does that mean, bonding? A bonding means you borrow the money and you pay it down the road. Right. So that's all. So your children borrowing. are going to pay for it. They right. bought. They went. And by on. the time they need roads and a fire truck and stuff like the police cars, you'll still be owing for the ones that are no longer that are now a piece of junk. That's why I don't have any kids. I don't they, like paying for stuff myself, let alone. They went in for the first six million. They go into the bond market. The uh, and uh, bonds, yeah. which but, you pay an interest rate on. Uh, borrowing the money and that enables you to come into the, the tax cap because of the you know instead of mm -hmm. six million it's the service on so, the bond so what they've actually yeah. done is they're actually reconvent they're recon how do you call it you're they're reconserving they're redoing the rule so instead of paying for it in cash well we can't do that anymore we need the money for something else so we let's have bond it but yeah. remember when you pay your car <laughs> registration here in Manchester mm -hmm. five dollars of that goes for paving they used to have a separate account would they have to be accountable for. Yeah. They closed that and put it in what I call their slush fund, the general fund. Yeah. So last year they rose $995,000 and not one red cent went towards paving because they bonded 100% of the paving. Right. Well, that's, that's typical in government though. Where and the then, but they say, they say that's not true, but it is the truth. Is. And so they haven't used the money where they were supposed to. Right. If you and I did that, we'd go to jail. Well, isn't there money that, I don't know if I should even be bringing this up as an example, but I will. Isn't there money that we're supposed to get here to run MPTS that doesn't get here? Well, you get because this it, year, it for example, they got they got uh, 1.9 million. Yeah, that's and the franchise fee yes. on Comcast. Which, by the way, right. some aldermen seem to think that that's a tax, a, 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 a property tax. It's not. If you own a home, Matt, in this city, and you don't have Comcast, you don't pay for it. Right. So right. it's not a property tax. It's a franchise fee. Right. You have to have Comcast. But what they do is that, that they got $1.9 million this year. They, 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 they reduced the, the budget for MPTS. Mm -hmm. and they're now getting 480000 of the $1.9 million. And when you ask what happens to the rest, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> I am worried about it. It's a red flag. Right. Where is it going? But we, that's that's legal. I mean, they can just yeah. It's because uh, I right. have you have you challenged them? Because I'd be pretty pissed. Are like, you uh, down there at City Hall asking? Maybe I should be. I want it. Glenn, Glenn and I go down it's, to City Hall. It's, it's hard to <laughs> challenge it, Matt. Do you know why? Why? Because since Mayor Gatsas has been mayor, he has his own little rule. Forget the RSA. RSA yeah. is the state law. Law. Yeah. Which Instead, do control he it. rules, and as long as there's a public meeting and he's behind that desk. As the mayor, you will not be able to ask a question. Yeah. And when I dared two years ago read the go, RSA, it, yeah. oh my God, was he pissed? How dare you come in my chambers? It's not his chambers. The chambers belongs to we, the people. Did you go in without knocking? Because that is rude. No, I was at the automatic <laughs> meeting. I went. 
I want you to he, hear he it. He loves to have fun. I do. I That's I why, why we don't bring him on the baseball. So we now have a city. We now have a city where people don't have a voice when it comes to matters of a public hearing. Giving your opinion is not educating. If you're there to educate yourself, you need to ask questions. Right. And they know the answers, but they don't want you to ask the questions because they don't want to give you the answers. Hey, right. do you know that the aldermen uh, actually rate our performances? They, what performances do they rate? Well, rate, uh, rate you, our performances. Like they said, said oh, Hopwood, that speech of three uh, three story. times ago, that was a low, though. You're oh, much really? better the second time, but you're... Uh, you know, that's pity, and I don't worry about that. No, but it's the thing is, you know, well, uh, I have PTSD, so if I I'm going to go off at the mayor... I do know that... I do know... I did speeches. learn last week from someone that if you have a loud voice, somebody lowers the mic. I, I could you, I could so. go in there without a mic. I have, my voice cares. It doesn't matter. I... I've re I've re seen them and I've aired them on my show and, and it's cloud it's clear enough. Now, Glenn, I was told I think it was at Joe Lard that only two people have been escorted out of that the chamber, really? and that was you Joe Kelly Lavasser and me. And yourself? Oh, really? <laughs> Why? You mean you never? What about Howard McCarthy? Yeah, he used respectful. to irritate I Ginta. Mean, I mean, I'll I'll tell them the truth. I say it like it is. Wait, but no, I'm really I have respectful. a bone to pick with you because you said you were going to go and give your speech in French and then you didn't do it. Remember? We you only just have, can't. You were we just only had three me. minutes. I did that when I ran French for take, office. French though. takes they, too long. The mayor didn't want me to use the chambers, and I ended up using the chambers, and I, I did my, my announcement in English, French, and Spanish. So why was Joe – see, I never heard this story. Why was Joe Kelly Lavasser escorted out of there? Oh, he, uh, he was he running was, Joe he, Kelly. He was an alderman at the time. He wasn't was an alderman. first so this time. was a long time ago? Yeah. He had been an alderman, then he wasn't. He had Joe Kelly's restaurant, and he's yeah. watching something. He got so angry. He runs down <laughs> there and tells whoever, uh, whoever the mayor was off, so they escorted him out. No I was kidding. surprised to find it was only me and Joe. I mean, of the wow. two people that would be escorted, I would guess it would be me and right. you. Are, and, and you are two of a kind. Oh, yeah. Did you ever see the Steve Valancourt show when I was on Joe's yes, show? Yes, I have. Oh. Unfortunately, Joe doesn't keep his tapes. He said, I wish I'd kept that one. Yeah, see, should. I keep my tapes. Yeah. Yeah. I tape everything. That's why I'm at the end of a two-year... Uh, Mine two are on IPM Nation. That's right. At the end of the two years, when it's time to campaign again, like next year, what happened the first year that he was in office doesn't exist anymore. The archives are gone. They keep right. them six months. And then when I come up and campaign and say, this is what you did, where did you get that information? I kept my tape. Oh, I caught him in a whopper. Yeah, you go back. Because some things aren't in the transcript or left out. That's why yeah. you make sure you keep your recordings. Yeah. One of the things was at the end of that one where they overrode the tax cap in 2014, Danny O'Neill, who was the chairman of the board, thanked everybody because it wasn't an easy thing to get through. You know, Joyce and uh, and uh, uh, they were negotiating with Billy Shea and that. Then they got it through, and then Danny was thanking everybody. And the mayor says, "Well, why don't you thank me too?" You know, and. Yeah. Danny, and he said, okay, Mayor, you know how Danny talks, if it'll make you feel better, I'll say thank you, too. We don't want and to that was that. left out of the transcript, but, but he, it was so funny. He also won an award this year. Because he wants to be thanked for overriding from the, the tax yes. I think from the fire department or from the drug thing. And uh, oh, he, he, after he received it in public, he said, and I thank all my aldermen, but when I'm no longer mayor, that's coming home with me. Well, if, it, if you thank everybody, it should be on the wall somewhere. So. That's right. I got a good story. Oh, geez. You know, an alderman uh, came up with the idea of creating a video about the drugs, and he told it confidentially to Ted, you know, in a casual meeting. Guess who announces that within a week? <laughs> it's his own idea. You know, well, that's the type of person Ted In the is. last three meetings, smooth, huh? smooth I've suggested when, for the Walmart yeah. issue that years ago, when Home Depot wanted to come to town, Home Depot, yes. they offered us $4 million to solve that problem. Sure. They were going to build a four-lane four highway to solve that You're problem. You're kidding. They were going to buy houses on one side of Gold uh, Street. Are you talking about because everyone's Street. complaining about yes, the yes. traffic well, going through it's there? All, they should never. It, the... the, the Highway situation that you should, like, Glenn said, you have yeah. to have a real offer. They, they had yeah. four million dollar offer, and it wasn't enough. And all of a sudden, the uh, the the bubble burst, and they just, and Lowell Lowe's. decided to leave. Lowell was in town. Then. Yeah, Lowe's. Yeah, Lowe's. And so they decided to leave it alone. So now Walmart gave him what a hundred and eighty thousand dollars to solve a four million dollar problem eight yeah, years I ago. Think it was, yeah, I think it's three hundred fifty. But here's an interesting thing about that uh, about the well, money. they have one hundred and eighty thousand now in the budget. I heard that the old police station 
was on the market, and Bill Binney wanted to buy it for a good price. One but, point two million. But Bill Binney ha had run for governor or senator, and he had his eye on the governor's uh, office. And guess who else does? Ted Gatsis. And Ted, when Ted doesn't <laughs> like something, I've heard he yeah. can stymie something. I think so he moved to Concord, yes. bought, uh, yes. and all the payroll and taxes went to Concord. But watch out what you what you wish for, because for example. He, w he offered the city $1.2 million. So he Bill Binney did offer yes, one point He wanted two. to make a uh, take the police station and make, make, it, make it into a TV studio. Right. But some people on the board and the mayor felt that we didn't need a second TV station. This is wrong with our city. We don't have, we're not allowed to have competition. But at the time, so what Bill Binney was a Republican running for office. That yeah, maybe but it doesn't Gatsis really matter wanted. because I'll tell you what. Bill Binney just bought the, the Citizens Bank. Right. And... Uh, I hear you. One of his plans in. is to build a station down there. Yeah. He's going to have an outlet out there. So guess what? What comes around goes around. But the point is, it's our city. We lost 1.2 million. Well, more How than that. How much did they sell it for? They're, they're, if you remember Pat, Pat, uh, Patrick Arnold when he first yeah. ran, second time. Right. Or was it the fir first time? Uh, he got an investor from Boston who wanted to buy oh, Pearl Street. The Pearl Street and garage. And they were going to build a five-story right. parking garage, give the city the first story because we wouldn't lose anything yeah and and then they're going to build two 14-story high-rises right well it wasn't the mayor's project so guess what it never went anywhere that's right so i need to remind the public out there that we need to tell our board of mayor and aldermen especially our mayor that money from florida or money from massachusetts is just as green as money from massachusetts from new hampshire it took three two and a half years to get the, the bedford lot hotel done so bad that we lost the first it was supposed to be the Hyatt. Now it's a who's coming now? It's a Marriott something. Yeah. So and so and, and, and it but cut, he likes but to it, steer but projects to his own front. But you know what we lost when the Harriet was going to be here? It's going to Marriott. The, yeah. No, the Harriet Hotel, the first okay. one. Oh, okay. It was going to cost the, the project was going to cost twenty-two and a half million dollars. With the new hotel, which is now the Marriott something, it's going to cost only fifteen million. So who lost? The More. city. Well, so is Gatsis the source of, because I, I hear constantly, and I'm sure you guys do too, that the city is, and I've been hearing it for years, that the city is notoriously hostile to new business. Yes, they are. In. Unless they're I want to Gatsis. change that. So, so Gatsis is, is the Let's, source of Well, that? he's not by himself. He's one of them. But right. Let's talk about Hackett Hill. Yes. Hackett Hill. This city, BAE, one of the biggest companies in the world, mm -hmm. the defense contractor, Nashua, that took over Simmons Precision and Raytheon. They're building, they're expanding in Merrimack, Londonderry, but not Manchester. Now, Hackett Hill, which I think Pat Arnold was involved in too, Pat, it was supposed to be light industrial, which gives us a better tax base, does it not? Yes, and plus it's more environmentally safe. But, but what the, happened? The point is, is Pat, we don't have light right. industrial. And Patrick Arnold and Joyce were involved in that. They right. were all them in then. And, and they were supposed to build a fire yes, station. Let me tell you who, who built the fire station? Let me tell you. What, is, it, what is up there? Just housing? Housing. Yeah. That's well, flooding it's, northwest. It's elementary. mostly land. It used to yeah. be, uh, uh, we used to belong to the University of New Hampshire, and yeah. we took their one building or two buildings and yeah. we exchanged it for the mill yard. Yeah. Right. So what happened is we got it pretty much for nothing. And well, actually, it was for nothing. But, but anyway, but let me tell you yeah. the story. What happened is they decided to bring in a, a Manchester developer, right. a friend of the mayor. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but that's a the truth. A friend of the mayor. And, and, and what happened is they say, we'll, we'll sell you the place, 121 acres, for 2.1 or 2.8 million dollars, but instead of paying us the money, but right, it was valued at between 20 and 30 million. But instead Sweet of inst yeah. instead of paying us the money, build us the fire station at that cost, 1.2 or 2.1 or 2.8, and in turn, you give the us deal. the deed of the fire station, and we'll give you the deed of the land. Mm -hmm. For two years, the 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 uh, the the, uh, the developer couldn't do it because whenever you go to a finance company and you borrow money. They want to make sure you have an attachment. So yeah. once they gave us the deed, collateral. there'd be no more collateral. Right. right. So we all know that in government, it's government's job to build fire stations, right. not developers. Right. So right. now they sold them the land for one point, for two point one or two point. And he didn't build, ha, build the station. Nothing's yeah. been built other than the apartments, and uh, and and uh, I don't even know if he's even paid the city yet. They won't let us know. <laughs> it's it's it, Ted Gatsis wow. is the most corrupt. It mayor is the in last history. piece wow. of land left for us to use. And it should be used for the for right. industrial development. Because yeah. Sylvania, the Sylvania plant, they closed that, is and now there's going to be another mini mall that we don't need. Are, are not a mini mall. Half our mini malls are closed. That we don't need. Where is at, that? At, 
right down on uh, South, South Willow, Willow Street. Okay. It's, uh, there was a piece that should have been kept zoned for light industrial it for was actually BAE. zoned for manufacturing right and we now they have no more manufacturing and they right. rezoned it so this city can't get a BAE this is yeah. Mr. Ted Gatz's who's I am a businessman <laughs> he his business is the business of you know wa wash the one but, hand the yeah. washing the other but, but let's make something of clear though sweetheart deals. Ted Gatz is like that but he's not the only one on the board there are a couple others, and they're not all Republicans. Okay. Now, who else? There names? was a you shift. Name names? There was a when shift. When the election comes up, we will. Oh. There was a wow. shift in power to the mayor under the new charter. The election's but only still, two weeks away. There no, is no, a we're talking alternate. next year's elections. Okay. So there's a lot of stories Glenn can tell. Yeah. Glenn knows. Glenn watches stuff like a hawk. Here's what's impressive to me about Glenn R.J. Willett, the people's mayor. The amount of knowledge he's able to retain in terms of numbers, facts, and figures and whatnot, very impressive to me. I'm thinking of one scandal that uh, I wrote a little about, but not much. Then I found that Glenn not only knew all about it, he knew even more. <laughs> oh, we have a call. I'll never forget that. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Would you like to bid on the Trumpkin? Hi, uh, I'd like to chime in on the Hackett Hill aspects, if, if, if you don't mind. Yeah, please do. Yeah, I'm reminded that way back when, okay, uh, we had a guy by the name of John Hoban that was had two separate hats, and he put into the stipulation that, you know, it's going to be an industrial park, but it all has to be brick buildings. Now, the only brick building we ever got was the, uh, the, the was school the that was university. there. Okay, yeah. then anybody that would try to take over and build a regular uh, steel building was disallowed because of that uh, stipulation for brick only. Then the whole thing went to hell and all went residential, and we have, we have no, uh, what do you call, industrial land left. Okay, what which are your is, thoughts? Which is a well, better tax base. There's still about, uh, Thank there's, you for the there's call. still about at least 100 acres still left. That we can use, but, there, but there's not, nothing's happening. Somebody that's uh, petitioning, like the city, to get another part that he's developed. Yeah, I'm sure. I know Keith Hirschman. And remember is a when Joyce, Mayor Gatsis, and others, and, and and but these were running for office, and as well as uh, Patrick Arnold, they were all in favor of having a prison that pays no taxes. They were going to pay taxes really? for the first ten years to pay their money, and when, then once they paid for the building. The state would take over back. It wouldn't be private anymore. It was a private thing. Oh. And then we'd go without. And the, plus, they were going to take all the awesome employees idea. at the Concord State Prison and bring them to Manchester. It would probably would have hired less than 100 people. That's what we don't need. We don't, that, that's not industrial. Right. I have a question about Tell me about the tax status of River's Edge, of the Elliott Hospital. It was what? supposed to be 100% taxable income. And now, well, there's so many nonprofits that I don't know what this percentage is. Is it now. paying any taxes? It now? is paying some taxes, but a much lower than what we had been guaranteed. And we were guaranteed three buildings, and we were still stuck with one. Now, what, hmm. how, with the CMC, Elliott, and uh, Dartmouth Hitchcock, how necessary was it had to have River's Edge? Actually, the reason why it was built by, by the private sector was because the, uh, the state, the ones in charge of the health department in, in, in Concord, uh, could not recommend uh, uh, state bonding because there wasn't a need for an extra hospital. There was no need for Rivers Edge. Why so was until it there is, maybe that's why they're not expanding it to the third building because the second and third building. Who, built, who built Rivers Edge? Dick Adenas was in charge. CMC. And was he on the board of <laughs> Elliott Hospital? I'm not sure. He may have been. I'm not sure. And CMC I, is a terrible I hear that. No, this is a CMC. I, I know. I'm just saying. That's why I said to CMC. That's your even opinion. Count. No, CMC <laughs> is yeah, not a terrible hospital. Yeah, it's a good hospital. hospital. CMC oh. is one of the top heart surgeons. It is. There's good. There's very country. good doctors. It's a very good hospital. Yeah, they, I, yeah, they have the heart so, thing. Covered, Elliot's but, my. So don't, so don't do that. But don't. But well, we look, have. You might have had a negative. We have three good hospitals in this city. They almost. They almost killed someone I know. But that's true. Well, of, that happens everywhere. My father was killed in one of the best hospitals yeah. in the United States. And, and, and someone else who was left sitting yeah. in the yeah. waiting room there. That was with Elliot. The, that with was a very high heart rate. Well, there was one. No, someone I know. Well, someone in Elliot was left sitting in the in the waiting room at CMC. And that doesn't. That happens. The same thing happened at Elliot two years ago when a guy who was mentally ill spent five days okay. in a waiting room and then he had a neck broke. I understand. That's for an analysis. That's right. But if you remember, walk I was in, talking about so, the so if you let's walk not, in, let's not dump no, the No, that's hospitals. not fair. We if have good hospitals. If you walk into an emergency room with chest pain and an elevated heart rate, 
they're supposed to take that somewhat seriously and not leave you sitting there for a half hour. Matt, that's you go what, to the front of the line. Matt, and that, I was an eyewitness to uh, that not happening at that. CMC. That. That's, that's why you have All hospitals court. do that. That's why you have lawyers. Yes. Well, so let's not that's part of the Luckily, regular. no one died. We, 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 have, we, we have good hospitals. <laughs> so Dick Erdignos built River's Edge, a hospital that was uh, an expansion of a hospital that was unnecessary. What's the relationship between Dick Anagnos and uh, Ted Gatzis? Oh, well, that's... they went to school together and they're probably friends, but what are you trying to say? I'm not just asking you. <laughs> You're America's mayor. Does, is he a big campaign contributor to Ted Gatzis? He probably is. I don't know. I haven't gone through those figures. But... Doesn't he own this building we're sitting in? I don't know if he still owns it. I think it got sold. I'm not sure. Why, uh, See, I like to give out facts when they're factual. If I don't I'm know, asking this when, they, when I don't know the quite answer, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. admit it. Dick Anningos is a big supporter of Ted Gatzis, as you know. I don't doubt that, but that's not the point here. Well, what is the point well, when the city, when a city, a lot, is, did the city of Manchester have anything to do with River's Edge being built? Did is it regulated? Well, we, Was the tax deal made on River's Edge with the ta with the mayor and alderman where they were supposed to give a hundred percent tax and then suddenly a big contributor to mayor gatzis who actually oh. benefits from building this suddenly I, I there is no that, tax. but i will tell you that when but we why can, well, how but do you know listen, who what, regulated the deal of the hundred percent taxes we're talking about taxes been, paid to manchester would have been the city in the zoning and planning world but the city are you afraid the of dick anagnos no i'm not afraid of dick i'm <laughs> going to tell you something and this is the truth God. okay uh, I'm, I'm trying to be, play fair here Dick Adenos wanted to buy that building, oh, five, six, seven years before that. City bought it. You're from, talking about uh, the JPAC. Right? Yes. City bought it from JPAC, and they outbid him. Now, he had bid for $5.6 million. We bidded $3.7 million. We kept it five years, and we paid $100,000 a year to keep it going so it'd be safe. And then we sold it back, and who was the second, the highest bidder? It was him. We made $100,000, but we lost a couple of million. So that wasn't his fault. That wasn't Agnos' fault. It was the city that interfered with building. That's wrong with our city. We, we interfere with private investors coming in here to improve our city. Well, was that well, how did Rivers I mean, Edge improve anything when it was not needed? It wasn't needed. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that <laughs> when the deal first came around, this city stopped it, and they shouldn't have. Was we had, mayor? We had no business. Was Gatsis mayor? He was an alderman. We so had, he wasn't mayor. Listen, and we when had he's no, mayor, we Nick had, gets the but bill. But we had no mayor. business in interfering with that bid. We had no interest in buying that property. Who bought it, Ginta? No. And Ginta was mayor? I well, believe he was, yes. Ginta was the mayor. Under the 1998... Charter change. Gintech could Powers not have done it. To the mayor. But Gintech could not have done it by himself. The, all the board of aldermen had to approve it That's as well. True. Remember this. Let's, let's not blame just the mayors here. I agree with you. No, I see the point John is making, though, about so, so Gatsis was an alderman, and then when Gatsis becomes mayor, mayor and he Ignace gets the gets building, the building he wanted right? for less of a price than what he would have paid. Yeah. It happens a lot in this city. So it, is, it is interesting. Yes. I just we, 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 my Elliot, the hospital my family's used, mm -hmm. all my. Uh, family were born in. Good choice. Except for me, because it was another thing like when you were mm -hmm. born. Uh, but where was I born? Manchester or this place, you know? Well, you know and uh, I'd like to know why this thing that's virtually probably bankrupted the Elliott Hospital was even built in the first place. Do you know that in this city, we've sold in the last 10, 20, 30 years, we've sold most of our neighborhood schools because they were so dysfunctional and so the old school. Yes, that they, they, we, they, they wouldn't pass. They wouldn't pass the codes. Right. Codes then, so they were bought by investors locally who made departments and expanded when we couldn't expand because we had no land. But the land yeah. must have been there. Yeah. So these people have made millions, and today we need we need neighborhood schools, and we closed them all. We created that problem. Well, do as we, we created well, parking well, problems. Well, wait, are you saying we don't have enough schools? No, what I'm saying is well, we, took, West is, we is took our neighborhood schools. Is it? We took yeah. our neighborhood schools that were, if they were good enough to make apartments of and 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 and, and meet the muster and expand because there was Darryl land Park, there, they would have been good enough to make school. schools. We were told they couldn't meet the muster. Yet someone bought it and repaired it. So we were lied to as usual, and we lost schools that would have still been there today in the neighborhoods, less bustling, would have been less costly. We created the problem. There's, so, there's always, if 
my father lived in Albany, New York, and I remember the Albany is notoriously Albany corrupt. Albany <laughs> and the Tri-City area. Everybody doesn't understand. When a city goes straight to hell, there's so much money to be made. In slum houses, yep. it's profitable. Yep. I know I've had reports, but I don't have the evidence of pe property people flipping properties in the inner city. When you drive, a, when the price of properties go down, if you can buy them cheap and hold on to them in the long term, when a city you comes up. You sound like Trump. Like a, I was going to say, I think we have a presidential candidate who knows something about this. <laughs> That's the, one of my hits against uh, Trump. New York City real estate, one of the most corrupt. Yeah. corrupt industries mm. in the world. Yeah. Do you it's know, a hustle and with political is. influence. Yes. Do and you we know, just describe somebody. Gatsis is the most corrupt mayor in You uh, really hate this guy, don't you? I don't hate him. He, I taught the facts. Okay. But he anyway. He's corrupt. And when he, th he threatens, sends threats to me and he tries to act out on them, he's the most petty, rather well, than you know who, but we won't bring that. Do you know who we need a Gatsis pumpkin, too. Do, do you know great. who? That's one we'll bust on. Uh, <laughs> Gatsis is through. Do you know who created he the... Came, um, he nearly came in fourth. And you know why, Glenn? He came in third. But he nearly a came distant. in fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeannie yeah. Forster almost yes. beat him. Yeah. Because the guys that come into the VA hospital, they associate this city with drugs and mm -hmm. the drug trade. And, they, and he, him, mm -hmm. for all his ballyhoo. People do, don't buy it. Like I said, at least it's not meth. Do you know who created the <laughs> parking uh, uh, fiasco in this city, specifically downtown and uh, in the mill yard? Our board of mayor and alderman, past and present. I'll tell you how they did it. Yeah. Back in the early 2000, 2001, 2003, they sold Canal Street parking lot for $3.3 million. To Cayman? No. Can you tell, we can they talk sold about it. Him. They, they yeah. sold it to the guy who used to own the uh, the, uh, the 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 black building, which is now uh, Selvin Towers. It wasn't Selvin Towers at the time. So, but anyway, the point is, is they sold the parking garage that we needed. Yeah. And 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 they sold it at three point three million dollars instead of paying the bond. Today. What year was this? Sixteen years ago. Seventeen years okay. ago. Okay. So today, seventeen years later, we still got four years to pay the bond, and we don't own the building. <laughs> Number one. Number two is we have a crisis in parking. We needed that garage. Three crisis years. Crisis in parking is true. Three years That's why later. The restaurants go on there. Mm -hmm. Three years later, they they re, that guy who owned it resold the parking garage. To Brady Sullivan for nine point six million dollars. How did he get it for three point three? <laughs> Our money. That's Friends nice of who again? I yeah. don't know, but let's yeah. face it. Two things so, we'll talk. I'd like to talk to you. So today we have a parking problem created by our elected officials. Yeah. And we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about something called a shadow government. But first, how did Dean Kamen get the uh, how did Dean Kamen get a hold of the mill yard? I wasn't here when that happened. Well the mill yard was pay the, anything for the, that building? Which one? The first building he took. He, he took over in the mill yard. He owns a lot of buildings there, but he, he didn't but buy the first them. He one. didn't buy them from the city. He bought them from Amiskade. Because it's the Amiskade Corporation still exists. Do they still own City Hall? Amiskade Corporation? They used to. It's, I, I, I'm not sure, but I'll tell you something. I, do you remember the Ash Street School? We were told that as long as it was used, it's in our lease, our contract with Amiskade, as long as we use it for education, it's ours. When we sold it to Silvertech, a private investor, right. they were sold it for a million dollars and they all the men expected and the mayor all the men expected a million dollars, but they only got 400000 because they broke the lease. And then they spent three point, three quarters of a million dollars in renting in the mill yard before they bought a condo, which we needed both, right. both like a nail in the head. That fit, yeah, that what? infamous thing. But I understood. So we spent a lot of money that we wasted in this city. There's a lot of waste in government. Well, yeah. I like wasn't it. here, but I understood that Dean Kim was basically given that building, which he then securitized uh, down in New York and, and got another building and he, another building. He did buy them for pretty cheap. because. And remember, when I remember left here, those buildings were MSK hellhole. had Nothing. gone bankrupt. So when but you 1933. Go, when, well, <laughs> no. no. The, the, the mills were sold when they went bankrupt. Oh, so we're talking about the successor to the yes. Amiskid, because yes. there was the so one in 33. When, when, when a company goes bankrupt, uh, it's in receivership. the banks sell it. Right. So you have a trustee. And, and sometimes you get it for pretty low money. And that's how but they But we're got talking it. whenever this bankruptcy happened. Back the the mills died. Right. So we're talking about 1933. Uh, Cayman was around then. He was younger, but he was so what, so what But is Cayman came here in 2000, and suddenly he's owning these mills. And with the uh, help of... Uh, the so business. Well, I'll tell you something good about Cayman. At least I'm not putting we, it down because there was nothing buildings, there. And today they're not empty. So let's not make everything but negative. But now they don't. <laughs> are they paying us taxes with all the nonprofits? Most of them are. 
Okay. Not all of them. What is, Most of them are. What does the city own? Like, does the city own anything? It sounds like the city sells everything off. The city, the, city city the, city it, 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 the city doesn't even own the city hall. The city doesn't even own the city the city hall building. Well, it was built by the MSK. MSK group has always know owned it. That. I suspect. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'd have to go through the uh, agreement. I suspect that if they were to sell it as a in, into a private investor. Yeah. Uh, and not make it a city thing, it, we would probably not get the full amount. It probably right. all done the same thing as actually school was. Right. It's like shell or the companies. carpenter. Yeah. The carpenter uh, library. If that was ever to be sold. We we'll probably not get what we want for it because it's not really our, it's ours as long as we use it for a library. So that's something the city actually owns. Hey, why? Well, as long as they use it as a library. Okay. Same thing as city hall. Right. As long as we use it as a library. Right. Same right. Exactly. School. As long as we use it as education, it was ours. Right. What about the Coit building? That used to be furniture. The right? what? What's that building that used to have a furniture up on uh, beyond the new police station? That's that's the Holt furniture. Holt. Holt. That Coit was privately something. owned. Right. They 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 retired. And now, what is it being used for now? It's going to be a rehab place, but now I have questioned that too. We already invested two million dollars into it. We're still supposed Who to owns open. that building now? It was supposed. Hold on. It was supposed to open May thirtieth, and here we are in almost November. It's still not open. Still not ready. Who owns it now? Um, well, it's a, it's a it's a it's I believe it's three parts. Um, Brady Sullivan, uh, 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 Dick Adenos, Dick Adenos, and oh, the city. Dick Adenos. <laughs> and uh, why are they chipping off the stucco of it? Off it? Why? Well, because is it, because you had to put windows out there now. It's a, it's not it's not. You a really furniture. needed that. That was a set. How much money did that cost? I don't know, but you can't have for fires in bedrooms. You have to have a window. That's the law. So you, don't tell me they can't chip it off. They have to to put it to code. You don't tell them they can't chip why, it off. Why, why, why get that? Build? <laughs> why get that? By, why acquire that building though with all the, that cost of that? It was a very cheap building to have. Why to, was the stucco put on? Cheap, that stucco well, wasn't put on until like thir 40 years ago. It was Because it used to be the, red brick. It was put on. That's right. It was put on. When red the brick. When it, red brick meant it, working class mansion. It was put right. on when the furniture factory came around. They didn't need to have windows in a warehouse. It's a warehouse. The upper floors were a warehouse. It was a warehouse. Yeah. It was and a so furniture you, warehouse. So it's not required to have windows. But bedrooms do. Hospitalization beds do. We have beds. We're going to have beds in there. And how much money was that stucco taking up? It's just I don't know. You have to find out. Yourself. And I wonder who has that contract. I don't. And know who's going to be the who's going to be involved in the nonprofit that takes that over? Hey, what's there's so much going on in this city where you we're need, funding. You need, but you need to investigate before you get your, to get your facts right. Though. I'm asking you. You're America's <laughs> mayor. Right now, right? I'm asking you. Questions. We're still working on that one. I do know we spent two million dollars so far. And two million dollars. The, the city of tax. Manchester. Property. Yes. I hear investment. about what about this Emily's place? What uh, what was that? There's a scandal in that or money? Emily, is it Emily's place? What's a, the place? A, 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 a woman's shelter? Oh no, uh, Amber's place. Amber's place. That's yeah. what we're thinking. What's the story yeah. about Woman's that? shelter. What's the story about that? There's what all sorts the of rumors. About the uh, the uh, three hundred fifty thousand dollars. No. Three hundred fifty thousand dollars that no. was spent. That's that, got to do with that Diana was Goss, owned, right? No, no, that had nothing to do with that. No, that was owned by a. Uh, 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 neighborhood America, and they sold it to the city. It was, that used to be their. They used to be their. Uh, their headquarters. What's people talking about? Money was just spent, and those people no longer are in control. And I, you know, well, no, no, as no, you know, New Horizon has that, and they are in control. Oh, who's it's on the board of New shelter. Horizons? Oh, Dick Dick Anagnost. Right? <laughs> yeah, but let's let's. So he is involved. He's and involved, he gets... but he's not the one that built the building. He's not the one that it, that repaired the building. So let's not blame everything on him when it's not. Let's get the Well, we got Gatsis. Well, yeah, if Mike Gilbert here, he'd blame everything on Dick Anagust. <laughs> well, and I disagreed with him about that. <laughs> but he had nothing stuff. to do with that. So let's not put him involved in something that he wasn't. I like to be fair. It's just easier. Though. I'm trying facts. to get information. <laughs> you know why in this they city? Do you know why they can't discredit me? Because I make sure I get my facts. We right. have no press, real free press here. Well, we, we got the Gatsis, well, the, formerly the Gatsis Gazette, and we have Stinky Gerard, and then there's the Grapevine, and that's how uh, you. I'm asking you these questions, not to put because you go and look for the. Information. There are some people in the in the, who are Democrats that are have power in this city. There are an alderman that also don't like the free press. So let's not just go one way. And who? But both parties are. What involved. Democrat is as powerful as Dick Adenauer? Dick Adenauer is not an alderman. No, I'm saying who's powerful. You're an educated, very well educated. Julius about Caesar. An pecuniary power equals political power. An alderman is just 
finger puppet. When you've been there 15 years and you were in charge of the, of the board, you have power. What there are power? three people in this city that really run our city. The mayor. The uh, mayor, uh, I'll give you that. Uh, Alderman Shaw. Shea. Shea. And, and Alderman uh, O'Neill. They've been there over 14, 15 years. Alderman wow. O'Neill is not the chairman anymore. Not anymore, but he still has a lot of power. Persuasive power. How long is the term? Had Alderman. Two years? Two, years? two oh, years. No, it's two years and you're not elected. The most powerful politician is Dick. Is the, there's uh, Mayor Gatz's. And Dan O'Neill has lots of power. Mayor Gatz. Well, come on, it? Mayor Gatz's. Box them off of the out of his. Position. Wait a minute. What about let's your not, buddy? Let's not equate. What, I understand it. When it comes to vote getters, they are the two. What about your buddy Gerard? I've heard you say that he's the second most powerful man in uh, Manchester oh, or well, person when, in Manchester. Well, when Fatty was running around the state, I, I coming in that. four, uh, nearly four. Yeah, yeah. What about the Trumpkin and then all the power that uh, this fine? Uh, well, he's another one. He 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 makes his millions on the on on Ooh. on the poor on the public. Yes. He claims that uh, this man's going to help John Hopwood get elected. He, you know. he claims that we need to build a wall and deport 11 to 12 million people. Yet he, he hires some of these people at a lower course, cost. Of course, of course. He doesn't he claims believe that we make America scam. better and bring manufacturing back to to to, to our cities in, in America. Yet he has manufacturers in Indonesia, China, of and course. India. So practice what you preach, people. Of Glenn, course. he believes in nothing other than Donald Trump is the risen Christ. He's, and Hillary he's a, is, a, is it's bought by the bank. I mean, let's face it. I don't like her either. Uh, well, we got to pick someone, but I don't like. That's I don't why trust I vote independent. By the way, though, did you did you, did you guys see that uh, a new nightly program has launched on Facebook? It's the beginning of Trump TV, which you predicted. I was yes, well, I did. he already said he was going to do that anyway. No, he's been pretty cagey about. That's he the real end about game. About a month ago. Yeah, his, but he was predicting it uh, yeah. six months ago. Yeah, yeah. His son-in-law announced it that you only had one bad win, one. He he's going to drop that. out. That's so, true. That's true. I got that one Oprah. Around. No, he's going to be the next Glenn Beck. Oprah. Except, oh, really? except successful. But Glenn, Glenn Beck doesn't own the network. Well, Glenn Beck owns the Blaze. He has his own at network, but it's about to it's about to go bankrupt. Especially now after this election. Well, uh, Donald uh, Trump can, uh, uh, is an expert at bankruptcy. How many? Yes. Six or seven bankruptcies? Money breeds power, unfortunately. Pecuniary power equals political power. And very dirty. And who loses? The common people. Is it dirty or is it just the way it is? If we're it's going dirty. back to Caesar. Yeah. No. It's still dirty. But it's well, never changed, and it never will. It's not democratic. <laughs> you can't be making laws as someone who's in power, and then you are exempt from that law. It well, doesn't work that way. Think of it this way, Glenn. A, a rich president, person is exempt from a president laws. Does, and a president doesn't make laws. So just think of it that way. A friend of mine... Yeah, he's not president right now, okay? <laughs> well, when I was in California, a friend of mine who was from Africa, but, you know, he lived here. Uh, he was actually from Liberia. He was a former minister. He told me during the, the uh, trial of uh, O.J. Simpson, he told me that, I said, you know, you go talk to him, why are the African Americans, you know, so excited? He says, Hoppy, you got to understand, we know he's guilty, but if he was a rich white man spending $8 million on his defense, he would have got off, and so he's a rich black man spending $8 million on his defense and getting off. So right. there's, t there's justice. If you've ever been in court, you often have to pay for it, civil or mm -hmm. criminal, yeah. because you have to have the better lawyer mm -hmm. if you can have to go through appeals. Absolutely. Course, yeah. That's right. it. Right. Absolutely, yeah. Yep. Well, we're only uh, two weeks out now from, uh, from the two election. Weeks out, I can't wait till it's over. Uh, I don't want to attend. It's like a great novel. He loves this as a, uh, as a show. I do. I embrace the reality program. I embrace the horror. But, Matt, we're talking serious about our country here. I know. And so it may be fun for a while, but it's, it's gone way overboard. You just got oh, to embrace the People are getting horror. ugly right now. You go out campaigning. Oh, yeah. I had I almost never got seen. Attacked. I was almost was attacked by a Trump supporter with blazing hatred in the I eyes. I had never yeah. seen people defriend you uh, on Facebook because you may belong to another party. Oh, I, that's It hasn't on happened on to time. me because I'm neutral right now, but it right. happens to a lot of people. Oh, it does. It does. They friends on you for years. Hey, I haven't yeah. got a dime from my friends uh, that were all the Bernie Sanders supporters. <laughs> this is all over the BBC and uh, I guess the national media with Hillary uh, uh, talking to me oh, on the first day of yes. the, the primary in Ward 10. And the warm embrace that you gave her. She's, you, you'd think I had uh, pulled a Trump on her. Yes. Um, you know, we we're best pals or something. Yes. I she was just <laughs> great. I assume you didn't. Uh, well, never mind. Can't even say it on uh, television, really. Look, look, at the, look at how debased the conversation comes. Even yeah. on the Matt Connerton, on Lee's show. Just bringing up Trump, Trump leads us there. Yes, yes. 
But uh, no, Hillary's up nine points in New Hampshire apparently, and you know, I mean, it's well, gonna be uh, I, f I figure uh, it might be a landslide. You know, you're political, so let me tell you what happened yesterday. Yes. MSNBC, CNN, and Fox, all three of them, come out with the same poll mm -hmm. in Nevada. You have this Joe something who's running. He's only allowed. He's only have enough signatures to be allowed on the ballot in 11 states. Yeah. But there's one state that You're he's talking winning. about Evan McMullen? Yes. In Utah. The Mormon. Yes. There's yeah. one state in that Utah. he's winning. He might win Utah. He's winning Utah. He's at 1%. He's 1% yeah. ahead of Trump and 2% yeah. ahead of Hillary. If he wins that state, that will be enough electoral votes to put a wrench that neither candidate Trump or Hillary will get 272. She's going to get like, over four. She's only yeah. 370. It, it may be a landslide. We'll but have to wait no, and see. The only no, state he You should work. never take an election for granted until well, it's over. Well, no, you're right, Glenn, because that's why I was saying uh, months ago, and of course, it's it, you know he's completely blown it. Kerry Johnson blew any chance of even when getting on the When he was on, on 60 stage. Minutes and came across like Oh, yeah. Imbecile. He didn't know Te the answer. Terrible, terrible. And then Bill Weld sitting there... Uh, I wish Weld was the well, nominee. Think, think if Bill Weld was the Republican nominee. Big, Big, <laughs> Wells, Big Wells knew the answers much more than Johnson did. But there was a, actually but a it's path. Tina. There was a path to a Gary Johnson presidency because of what you were just talking about. Because if Gary Johnson could have won, I say could have because there's no chance now. He's blown it. But if he could have won just enough electoral votes to deprive both Trump and Hillary of getting to 270, it would have thrown it to Congress. Mm -hmm. They would have had to choose the new president. Okay. And, if, and if enough Republicans were nervous about Trump, they might have gone for mm -hmm. Johnson. And it's, actually, and Gary Johnson could have been and president. And let's go one and step further. And when was the last time the House of Representatives pick the uh, voted on president actually has it ever happened yes uh, and they had to re they had to uh, uh, amend the constitution 1800 okay, yeah. okay. So I, I, that's a long time ago and, and, that is, yeah. and let's go one more extremely, uh, extremely unlikely let's go it, one step further possible. yes the the three major news networks are so concerned about it that they've actually created a third color Dark gray, in case he wins. They are now, trying to create some well, type I understand of drama that. to sell I that. understand that, but course, also, we course. also know that the Constitution says that if it comes that they can't get to 272, the Congress... 270. Will, 270, the Congress will elect... Jeez, well, and guess who they want? They don't want that. Trump, so the Republicans will vote for... Mc, what's his name? Evan McMullen. Evan McMullen. That's interesting. I think that's unlikely because I, I think I think John's right. It's going to be a landslide for Hillary, but but that is a tantalizing scenario, and that is also that, that is possible. That will never happen. It is possible. Well, let me tell the voters one thing: if you stay home and you don't take part in the process, and your candidate loses, don't complain. So it's not you sh they anymore. should go to vote yeah. because they are part of the process. Yeah. And you cannot change government unless you take part in government, and this is the only opportunity that voters have. By oh, the way, did you guys McMullen know? McMullen might win Utah. Yeah, he that's might. That, that's, that's a big, big story. That yeah. would be, and that would only be significant if Trump got theoretically close to 270, which right. isn't going to happen. But it's still a big story. It's that possible that he'll win Nevada, it's though. Such an I mean, uh, you, the state Utah. of Utah. Because Utah. the Mormons despise Trump, yeah. as any Catholic should or anybody religious, because the guy. Right. Uh, remember when he got born again just oh, before? Yeah. Uh, Whatever he, it is. The way he you know, fakes it, it, it almost comes off like he's mocking them. Can I just well, say something? Is. The yes. people that say if Bernie Sanders is running, he'd be president. Trump has no core identity. This Trumpkin has more of a core identity because it's got <laughs> seeds and pulp and everything. Yes. He would have just been able to tack to the left because he was a liberal democrat or a moderate democrat to 2011. He was for abortion, for taxing yeah, the rich. Yeah. He would have just gone towards the middle and uh, called him a communist. And so who's well, there, who? Although, to be fair, though, there is polling data that shows Bernie doing better against Trump than Hillary. Yeah, yes. and that's not a real situation. Oh, well, it wasn't a primary, and he was always ahead. That's not a real situation, because you're not facing a real vote. Today Polls. you're not, but you were in the primary. But you know, that's, that's a f logical fallacy, and you know, you're, we're just making an <laughs> argument. You can't. You know, you also told me many years, many it's months ago after the right? primary that there's no way that Trump would even come close, and he's close. Trump's not close at all. Oh, he's close. He's not close to anything. It's within the margin of error right now. Yeah, Glenn, really. it's an electoral college. I know that, but it goes by the. Uh, did you have uh, to Al, win the is Al Gore president? Uh, name, the, name, name the people that won the popular, popular vote. And that didn't no, win the I'm not saying that. I'm saying Andrew Jackson the first time. I understand that. Listen, I understand the system. The man on the but you have bill, to get to get the New Hampshire electoral vote. 
The, par- the, the, the candidate has to win the, pop- the popularity. Okay. Glenn, uh, you know, the, so uh, the faithless elector, if I decided <laughs> I wanted to vote for Glenn, if I was an elect, I'm one of the few people that have actually met somebody that voted for president. Really? We've all only voted for pre- presidential right. electors. Right. We've never directly voted for president. Yeah, it was Elizabeth Warren with the, the Electoral College of Massachusetts. Yeah. So that's one of the only people that ever voted for it. If I wanted to, I could have vote for you. I could vote for Matt. Well, I you, could vote for anybody. You could still wanted. do that in the write-in. Well, that no, was, I'm talking no, yeah, as an elector. He's talking about as an elector. Uh, the faithless electors. Uh, George Wallace got a couple like yeah. uh, that's sixty. That's the reason why we need to get rid of these. Um, the electoral college elect- and no, no, because no, that's what some people think. We the um, hey, uh, what do they call that? They had it big in the in the primary. You were you you win a state, a candidate wins a yeah, state. Yeah, you should win the congressional But your politicians district, like decide man. to vote against you. They're called the, the superdelegates. The superdelegates. Yeah. We need to get rid of superdelegates. I agree. Because they don't vote in the popularity of but the people. But then you'd have to have a, a, a whole overhaul of the system. They're private There's a better party. way to do it. They're private. Pu- there's no parties in the Constitution. That's a whole different right. thing. Hey, what do you think of Justin Trudeau as prime minister? You're... F- you, you were actually, educated in yes. Canada, weren't you? Well, we're educated in, so in, funny in that Maine. So funny that Pierre's... Well, we I don't, know both the history of Canada and Maine, but hang, we have to come talk hang, about Hang this. on, guys, because we have a call, and we're about out of time, but it, it might be someone who wants to bid on the pumpkin, so the we'll Trump-kin. grab this. The Trumpkin. The Trumpkin, yes. We're going to wind up... Hello, Trump caller. Who's this? doing it on your show. Hello? Sound uh, off. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I am. Is this Roland? It sounds like Roland. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Hey, uh, we're almost out of time, but uh, go ahead. Say your piece, please. Yeah, um, I wanted to say something about Gold Street and the Gate. About what? Oh, Gold Street and the Gate. The gate oh, problem. the Gate on Gold Street. Oh, yes, Glenn, yes. Glenn, Glenn knows yes. a lot Oh, okay. That. Go ahead. Yep, go ahead. Go ahead. Has anybody, has anybody ever said anything about, like, Lake Cavanaugh and Fruit Street with all the cars going down to the arena on Elm Street? Good what? point. Very good did, point. Did anybody ever say show. anything about Lake Cavanaugh and Fruit Street with them cars going down them streets to the <laughs> arena in there and uh, all the traffic by the people's houses on them streets? It's a good point. Well, the problem is that the city builds these big projects or gets investors to build big projects, and they don't do the infrastructure work, and so we right. are squeezed in. And who pays for it? The common folk. No, All right. No, tell we, we when's your show going to be on? You yeah, yeah, maybe you can. Uh, that's your show. My show's going to be on the elections this week. So. And oh, what okay. time is uh, it? From 4 to 5. Thank you, Live caller. on Thursday. We'll and let it Bill large. Barry might be on. Next week. Right. Oh, it's next week. Yes. All oh, right. Maybe the Trump. We got to. Oh, O'Connor is going to be on this week. Oh, Sean O'Connor. We got to go. John Hopwood, thank you so much. Look, uh, Leonard J. Willett, the people's mayor. You're welcome. Look on that. Matt's site for the auction of the Trumpkin. Yes, the Trump, this well, beautiful tr- Trumpkin painted by John's sister. Maybe we can get. She did get, a wonderful uh, job. Maybe we can get uh, our our favorite psychic to on the two hours of his show. I hope Noah, so. Yes, yes. To thump the tub and send out <laughs> positive. <laughs> Thump the tub for the Trumpkin and send out positive waves to we, get the people betting on this We thing. could even try to do it on Gary's show, but I have a feeling he won't go for it. <laughs> As the old saying goes, <laughs> if there's a pistol inside, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. Or an improvised device of some nature. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk at you all later. That's been percent.